Let's begin with the issue of uh, the latest statistics we've seen from Yata, whereby cargo freight, and I'm talking about the freight uh, torn kilometers, we just uh, grew modestly in 2013. Yes. What would you say were some of the key challenges that led to this very modest growth? And if we were to look into regions, which would you say was the poorest in terms of performance? Well, um, the freight performance always mirrors the economic performance, the global economic performance. And, and as you know, in recent times, the economic performance globally has not been very, very good. And because of that, freight followed a similar trend. However, we saw an improvement from the second half of last year. The second half of last year, things began to pick up. And up till now, things are still picking up. Unfortunately, the weakest region is Africa. And, and Africa did very poorly last year, and we're seeing that poor trend still continuing. Now let's talk about, I'll mention three airlines and I'll let, and you'll tell me what you think of them. Yeah. And one of the, one of them is the, the South African Airlines. We have Ethiopian Airlines and we have Kenya Airways. Yes. When I mention those three, they have a different management and regulatory and also ownership. What comes to mind when I mention those three in terms of how they're doing their growth, their projections, their performance? Well, these three are actually the biggest three airlines in Sub-Saharan Africa, if you leave out of North Africa. Um, and I, uh, South African Airways is the biggest of the three currently. Uh, the, unfortunately, even though it's big in, time, in, in terms of uh, aircraft and in terms of network, it is not doing so well in terms of profitability. We have seen uh, significant uh, or frequent man management changes in South African Airways. We have also seen uh, that they are focusing on some areas uh, currently which are not helping the airline. For instance, they need to renew their fleet uh, because they're using very old fleet today compared to the fleet that Kenya Airways and Ethiopian Airlines mm -hmm. are using. How about now, Ethiopian Airlines and Kenya Airways? Now, if you look at the, the situation of Ethiopian Airlines and Kenya Airways, um, the difference between the two is that Ethiopian is 100% government owned. Yes. Kenya Airways is uh, Government owns a certain amount of shares, I think 20 something percent of shares. 24 percent. And uh, the rest uh, is owned by other uh, institutional and individual investors. Now, but Ethiopian Airlines have a fundamental strategy which has worked for them all these years. The country realized a long time ago that it is a landlocked country mm -hmm. and air transport was their only bridge to the rest of the world. And therefore, there was a conscious decision made by the governments years back never to interfere mm. with the management and operations of the airline. So in that case, the government is actually working quite well with the airline. Very well. Mm -hmm. It is providing the needed mm. support that the airline needs mm. and allowing the airline to operate as a professional commercial entity. Mm -hmm. Great. So at least that's a different perspective from, from the South that's African one. A, that's different from the South African. How about Kenya Airways, which is partly now, owned by government and which actually just uh, landed its first Dreamliner? In fact, for Kenya Airways, it's, it's actually one of the success stories of privatization mm -hmm. of airlines in Africa. Um, not only has it done very well over the years in terms of growth of, of uh, the size of the airline, mm -hmm. its network, and, and also its profitability, but the airline is also run very professionally. Now, talking of the global market, which is my final question and a yes. very quick comment, we've seen recovery uh, happening, especially in the Eurozone. Uh, for you, what then does this reflect? Because you did say that uh, cargo reflects economic uh, you know, development in, in the certain regions. What then does this project in terms of the outlook that we're expecting for 2014? No, 2014 looks uh, good uh, for the African market. <clears throat> Last year, the industry made a loss of uh, $100 million. But this year, we're projecting that the industry will make a profit of $100 million. Uh, traffic is forecast to grow, uh, passenger traffic, by 5.4%. And uh, cargo traffic is uh, forecast to grow by about 4%. Other airlines are realizing that Africa is the last frontier of growth for, for aviation. It is a virgin market with uh, very few players that, are, that do not have a competitive edge. And so foreign carriers are increasingly coming into Africa. And uh, if you look at the load factors, for instance, that were released uh, by IATA for January and February, you'll notice that whilst African airlines are positioning themselves by investing in new aircraft, 
the traffic is on the decline for most of them. So we're having bigger aircrafts coming in, but the number of passengers that go on each of those aircraft is slightly below what they were carrying before. Now, and this has impact on profitability of, of the airlines. And uh, the, the, the reason for this uh, decline in the traffic is because of the uh, competition from outside, uh, which is actually uh, better equipped uh, to, to um, operate more cost effectively.